Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. It is Monday. It's a wonderful Monday. Always a good day to be a part of the kingdom of God. Always a great day to come and give God our first. I'm excited about this morning. I'm excited about all the Lord has done in our lives. Good morning, Sister Mary. Sister Cherise, good morning to you. I am just excited about what God is doing in the hearts and the minds and the lives of the people of God. Good morning, lady. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Sister uh, Charlene. Lady, good morning. Bishop Jones, good morning to you. Sister Natalie, good morning. Come on in the room. Greet me as you come in. Greet one another as you come into the room. Good morning, Sister Rebecca. Good morning to all of you. It is such a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. Good morning, Sister Rochelle. Listen, I'm excited. Yeah, it is a good Monday morning. It is a great Monday morning. Good morning, Sister Shante. Let's go before the Lord, and then we're going to get right into what I believe the Lord has for us on this morning. Uh, Bishop Jones, I thank you. I see you joining us this morning. I got some great um, great news in regards to our yesterday, so I want to hear about what um, took place in your service on yesterday. I know it was powerful. I know it was mighty, um, just as I know you, you spoke a powerful word to the people of God on yesterday. So, Father God, we just bless your name and we praise you, God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, just for all the wonderful things that you do to us and for us, God, and through us, for the wonderful blessings that you continue to, to, to um, make come alive in our lives, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you rule, God, and you reign in every situation that we could come in contact with, Lord God. And when you ask, when we ask you for a thing, Lord God, God, you do that thing for us. So, God, we just ask you right now that you will come into our places, our homes, Lord God. Come into our hearts, oh Lord God, that the word that falls, God, today will fall on good ground, oh Lord God. And that you will take it, Lord God, and Lord, you, it will accomplish what is being sent to do. I thank you, Lord God, for the people of God who are diligent to hear the word of God, that they may be changed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Those I did not greet while I was yet in prayer, I want to say good morning to you. A great God bless you. Sister Donna, Evangelist Baker, good morning to you. Good morning to all of you. I thank you for getting up this morning and just allowing the Lord to speak to you and speak through you as you go out this day or go out throughout this week. I want to just yesterday, um, you all know that we were leading up to a wonderful day of celebration at our church. We called it Super Sunday, and it was a day that we um, we started in prayer about three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, and we began a prayer campaign where we were praying and seeking God for many things uh, that we felt that we were in need of from our different families and situations. Situations. And we do this every year and, and we come, we do it as a culmination of, of um, bringing our first fruits to the Lord. And we did that on yesterday on March 17th. I'm telling you, it was a powerful service. That service was so powerful. Even as we began to sow our seed and make declarations to the Lord in regard to what we knew that he was going to do because we were sowing our seed. And it, it, it seemed as if the heavens were just opening up before our very eyes. And I bless God, even for the seed that was sown. And I will say this to you, not bragging, but just to say that the Lord has done some great and mighty and marvelous things, even in our house. And I pray that he's done some marvelous things in your houses as well. But even our seed on yesterday. Yesterday was over $10,000 in that one day. And so we were just so excited about what God had done in the hearts and the minds of the people. And we know that God is blessing. He's healing. He's making a way. Listen, he is doing some awesome things. It was powerful and it was encouraging to see how the people of God in faith sowed their seeds and in faith they know that God is going to work a mighty miracle in their life and so I just bless God for the people of God I bless God for all of you sister Mia good morning sister Monique good morning for those who were not in the service yesterday and you still had not yet sowed your seed you can still sow your seed because I'm telling you God even blessed on yesterday even yesterday he brought mighty miracles listen even in our lives and so I just bless God for the things that happened in that service on yesterday. So um, today I'm talking about the victory lap. The victory lap. When you run the race and you have become the winner, listen, there is a race. There is still, you're still running. You're still running. So you take another lap. Amen. So when you're running in a race, and those of you who have run track or, or you've done certain things and you see on the Olympics, even after they win, they don't stop. They continue to run. They take another lap. 
they take what's called a victory lap. And this morning, this is what I want to talk about with us today. I want to talk about that victory lap. Because even though we have won, even though we have sown our seed, good morning, Sister Angela, Sister Valerie, good morning to you. Even though we have sown our seed, even though we have run the race, we have won the race, we got to know there is somebody, there's an adversary out there still lurking, trying to get us. So we cannot get off of our watch. We cannot come down from the wall. We cannot stop praying. And, and even though the prayer campaign has ended, you you all still have that prayer pamphlet that you can continue to pray in regard to those scriptures. There are many scriptures that were given. You can use that prayer pamphlet until we um, start our next one, which will be sometime in November. But you can continue to pray. And I hope that you had got, gotten a habit of praying every day in regard to certain situations. Even so to the point that you don't even need that pamphlet anymore, that you are memorizing those scriptures. Even as David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart. I've memorized it, God. I've, 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 I've written it on my heart, just like a, a tattoo. I've etched it in my heart that when things come up, when things come against me, Lord, I, I won't sin against you, God, but I will be ready to spew that word out. The word is going to bring me power and might. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse number 14 says, but thanks be to God who made us his captives, listen, and leads us along in Christ's triumphal procession. His triumphal procession, the victory lap is what I'm calling it. Now, wherever he goes, this is a different translation. He urges us, he uses us to tell others about the Lord and to spread the good news like a sweet perfume. I'm telling you, when you are walking in victory with the Lord, when you are being captivated, captive by the Lord, the Lord will lead you in a triumphal procession. He will lead you in the victory lap. Why did I say he will lead you? He will not lead you. So once you've gotten to the other side of victory, the Lord doesn't lead you because he understands what's coming next. He understands what's going to happen. Thanks be to God. Paul here is saying, listen, God leads us in a triumphal procession. He leads us. God leads us. And so this morning, I know I know many of us, listen, we want victory. Many of us have victory. Listen, we planted our seeds on yesterday. We know that the harvest is going to come because this is our season. This is our year. This is our time to reap what it is that, listen, what we have sown to reap what it is that we know that God has already spoken in our lives time and time again. But it's time, listen, that we can take that victory lap. I know, listen, you all have seen parades and you've seen how a cele cele celebratory they are. You've seen how people celebrate in parades. You want to have that same type of celebration. If you want to have that same type of celebration, you got to make sure that you're hooked up with winners. You got to make sure that you're on the winning team. And then you got to talk about, listen, the celebration is like this. You see a parade and you see people, they're dancing. You see people, they're singing, they're twirling their batons. You see the bands, everybody's making triumphant noises. They're making joyful noises. That's what the, the parade is like and, and the, 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 the victory lap and the, 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 the route, the parade route has got a, a lot of people on it. You see them waving at everybody. It's jam packed. And even we think about that from the standpoint of sports. I'm talking about a victory lap this morning. Good morning, Sister Elaine. Why are we so excited about sports? Why are we so excited when our team wins? We're excited about it because when the team wins, we win. We're excited about it. Listen, when the team wins, when the team is successful, we're all successful. We can wear the gear, right? We can wear whatever that gear is that that team has. We are successful as well. And that's what Paul is talking about here this morning. Paul is talking about, he's looking at or he's thinking about the parades that happens in Rome. Listen, when there was victory, when there was a victorious celebration, he's talking about the parades that were coming. And even all throughout the Bible, listen, when the, the generals, they were been victorious, they were defeating their enemies. We know many men had fallen at the hands, listen, of those that were in the word of God. And many people have been positioned for 
for victory. We've been positioned for the battle. We've been positioned for victory and we have won. We have come out on top. And I'm telling you this morning, people of God, because of what you have done, you have come out on top. You are triumphant in this. You are victorious in this. But again, as I said earlier, Jesus is leading you in this triumphal victory procession. He is leading this procession. Why is that? Why is he leading? Good morning, Nadine. He is is leading the procession. Why? Because he is undefeated. Jesus Christ is the undefeated king, listen, of the universe. He is the undefeated king in our behalf. Jesus has taken care of all of our enemies. He subdued all of our enemies. I'm telling you, with the seed you have sown, you have subdued all of your enemies all of them. And the Lord marches with triumph. And because he marches with triumph, we can now march with him. We've got our head held high because we are walking with, we are marching with the undefeated king. Nobody can stop him. Nobody can stand against him. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one can stand up against him. We are undefeated. Listen, and when the Lord is undefeated, we are undefeated with him. Paul says, listen, everybody who believes in him, listen, we can march with him in that victory parade. We can march with the Lord in that victory parade. And when he wins, we win. Why is that? Because we are on the winning team. We are on his team. He wins the victory. He wins the victory, but we share in the triumph. He wins the victory, but we reap, listen, what is sown. He wins the victory. He gets the glory, but we are able to join in the celebration. And I'm telling you, yesterday we had some kind of celebration. It was a celebration. So for those of you who didn't celebrate today, you need to celebrate. Celebrate what the Lord has done in your life. Celebrate what you know the Lord is going to do. Celebrate because of the declaration that you have put before him. Celebrate because he is God celebrate because he is a sovereign king. You need to celebrate, listen, because he is undefeated. Listen, and as we are walking this victory walk, as I said before, we may have won the victory, but listen, even in the Olympics, I see it. They take another victory lap. They grab their flag and they walk around or they run around or they trot around. Listen, uh, the, 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 the field to let people know, listen, that I am the victor. But this is one thing we have to do. If you want to walk in victory, you got to know a few things. Listen, when, when we become Christians, when we become people of God, our learning doesn't stop. It's just like when we're in school. We started maybe in preschool and when we go to kindergarten, first, second, third grade, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, then we get to middle school, seventh, eighth, and then we get to high school, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade. We're continuing to learn. And then many of us, because we know that we still need more learning, then we go into our um, to college and we, we learn some more things. That is just how it is in being a Christian. Christian. Please don't ever think that you've learned it all. Even though you may have read the Bible backward and forward. Listen, it's the revelation, listen, that brings life to you. Because every time, listen, even that happens with me, I may read a scripture this day and the next week or the next week I may read that same scripture. But the Lord then will reveal something new unto me, something new that I'm learning that is good for me, that is good to keep me on the right path, to keep my feet grounded in the things of God. But if I'm not open to learning, Listen, I won't have the victory that I have. If you're not open to learning, you won't have the victory that you have. So we have got to always be depending on learning because Satan wants to keep you ignorant. Satan wants to keep you not knowing who God is. So listen, he, Satan, his job is to kill, steal, and to destroy. You know that. So if you want to have victory, you got to know. You got to know, know some certain things about God. What is it that you got to know about God? You got to know, listen, that you've been crucified with Christ. So no matter who tells you that you're not, as you're walking that victory lap, you're walking with your head held high because you already know, listen, Satan comes to steal that which has been planted in your spirit and in your heart. Satan will come to tell you, listen, that even you planting your seed yesterday was of none effect, but you got to tell Satan, listen, he is a liar and the father of lies and you will not believe him. You have been crucified with Christ. What does that mean? 
mean? You have been buried with him. And when, when the father, when father raised Jesus from the dead, he raised him with all power. You have that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You've been buried with Christ. You've been raised with Christ. You have now been united with Christ. And together you are taking this victory lap. Together you are in the victory procession. We have, listen to me, people of God, we have died to sin. So if we've died to sin, we're taking a victory lap now. If we've died to sin, good morning, Sister Monisha, how can we live in it? How can we live in sin any longer? Listen, when we start doing things, when we start knowing the word of God and we start do, doing and behaving as the Lord would have for us to do and to behave, we cannot go back to the old. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things, listen, those things pass away. Behold, new things come. I'm taking a victory lap. I don't know about anybody else in this place, but I'm taking my victory lap because I know that I have the victory in Christ Jesus. Listen, we have died to sin. Let me just finish there. We're done. Sin is over in our lives but but and so therefore we says we were buried with him through baptism into death in order that as Jesus was raised from the dead listen through the glory of the father we may live with him too i want to live with Jesus Christ i want to live with Jesus as well listen when you when somebody is baptized come on they go down into the water and this is a symbolic, we know it's symbolic of the portrayal of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We know that. And when we get up, we are able then to take that victory lap. The victory was the salvation. When you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that was the salvation. That was the victory. But the victory lap, listen, is when you show that symbolic um, 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 portrayal of the Lord's death, his burial, and his resurrection, and you get up with him, and then you're able, listen, and you get up, and you're able to take that victory lap. You're in a procession with the Lord. Paul says it. He says it. He says, you've died to sin. You've died to sin. And maybe some of you may say, listen, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm crucified with Christ. I don't feel like I've died to sin. I feel like sin maybe is overtaking me. But listen, you don't have to worry about your feelings. I'm not talking about your feelings. I'm talking about what you know. When you take a victory lap, you got to look at the things that you know, not the things that you feel. You are dead to sin. You are freed from sin. Freed from it. The Bible tells us we are died, we have died to sin. And anybody that has died or dead to sin, you're freed from it. You're freed from sin. And so to be dead from sin means that you're freed from sin ruining your life, from the power of sin ruining your life. So dead to sin, this doesn't mean that you don't sin. Listen, um, we know that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We understand that. It doesn't mean that. But dead to sin, it, 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 it doesn't mean that we're free from temptation to sin. It doesn't mean that temptation is not going to come. <laughs> Listen, sometimes perhaps maybe even overtake us. But being dead to sin, what does that mean? It means that sin does not have the power to dominate you. You are walking a victory lap. Sin doesn't have the power to overtake you. It doesn't have the power to dominate you. You are separated from the dominating power of sin over your life. I saw a story. It says sin, being dead, dead to sin is like watching a lion at the zoo. And you may get a thrill from it. You may get a thrill from listening to the lion roaring in the cage. But as long as the lion is behind the bars, listen, you're safe. The lion can roar. Sin can roar all it wants. But it can't do anything unless you do something crazy like get into the cage with the lion. That's how sin is. Sin can roar. It can rear its ugly head all it wants to. But if you're dead to it, listen, you don't have to succumb to that. You don't have to get into the cage with the lion. Because if you do, then sin will overtake you. Sin will overshadow you. So as long as you understand, you got to know that sin is broken in your life. Sin cannot dominate you cannot dominate your life unless you choose to let it, unless you choose to get in the cage with it. It cannot dominate your life. It's just like a roaring lion. You can walk the victory walk. You can take the victory lap. Listen, even though the sin is still roaring rampant, you can take the victory lap. 
What do you have in Jesus? We have a brand new life. We have resurrection in life. Listen, we have died with Christ. And so because we have died with Christ, we also believe that we're going to live with him. We know that Christ was raised from the dead. He cannot die again. Death has no mastery over him. Death, listen, he, he took the sting of death. Death, <laughs> he died. The Lord died once and for all. But now he lives and he lives in every one of us. He lives in us. He died for us that we too may have a brand new life brand new life and that we're able to take the victory lap that we're able to be in the procession with the Lord Jesus Christ listen he he didn't save us that we would go back to the old messed up life that we had he didn't save us so that we could do that he saved us to give us a brand new life he saved us to walk in victory he saved us listen so that we could be completely different from what we had before so we're talking about salvation, not um, being a, a renovation, but I'm talking about tearing it down, not just a home improvement, but salvation being completely tearing down the old and making something new in your life, new so that you can understand the victory in Jesus Christ. We got to understand what God has done for us. What did the Lord do for us? When he took, sent Jesus to Calvary, what did he do for us? Yes, that's right. He defeated death. When we understand what the Lord did for us. It's a powerful thing that we're able, listen, to walk in victory. No longer walking in defeat. And if we don't understand what God has done for us, I mean, every single day, if we don't understand that, that we won't be able then to yield to the leading of the power of the Holy Spirit. We won't be able to, lead, to yield to what God is doing in our life in order to maintain victory. In order for us to constantly and perpetually walk that victory lap. We want to be able to perpetually walk that victory lap. So it all begins with an understanding of what God has done in your life the moment you began to trust him. Go back there. When did you begin to trust God? When did you trust God? When did you give the Lord your life and say, Lord, I give my life over to you? When you did that, the moment you did that, he transformed you. He made you new. Listen, he took you, he snatched you out of the kingdom of Satan and brought you into the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, because he did it, I'm excited about it. I'm excited today because that's the truth of what you need to know in order to continue to walk that victory walk with the Lord. You got to walk it. And when we're walking that victory lap, there is an impact that you're going to have not only in your own bodies, but among your family, among your coworkers, among those you walk and talk with every day. There is an impact that you're going to have in the lives of people who are around you. For the word of the Lord says in verses 15 and 16, it says, For we are to God the aroma of Christ. We are to God the aroma, the sweet smelling savor to, of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So not only are we, a, a, listen, sometimes we're the only Bible. That people are going to ever read. Sometimes you, the children of God, the people of God, you are the only Bible that people are going to read. So whether they be saved or whether they don't know the Lord and the pardon of their own sins, we have to become a sweet smelling savor to them. A sweet smelling aroma of Christ among those who are walking with us, who are watching us, who we may not even know they're watching us. Come on, they got to watch us take the victory lap. I don't care what has gone on in your life. I don't care what has happened to you. I don't care what you're going through right now. You got to claim victory. You got to decree it. And you got to declare it because the Lord, listen, he is walking with you. There are many things that have happened down through the years. Now, I'm not, not, I'm not even talking about what happened in the Bible, but I'm talking about down through the years right here up to the year 2019. Many things that have caused you to want to quit, to want to throw in the towel. But listen, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Listen, there are people that will not even hear you, will not hear the voice of the Lord through you. It doesn't matter. You continue to walk that victory walk. 
off. You continue to run that victory lap because even as the word of the Lord says, listen, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is a two-edged sword. It cuts on both sides. Listen, so when you say the word of God, the word of God will accomplish what it has been sent. Many people, listen, they are, mm, many people are saved by the word of God, but many people are mighty afraid will die by the word of God because they hear the word of God and they do not heed what the word of God is saying. But listen, we have received so many great and precious things. So those you know, listen, those you know, the Bible says he who wins souls is wise. We're walking this victory walk because we're making sure that we don't leave anybody behind. We're going to win souls, as many souls as we possibly can, because there are things that we receive when we come into Christ. And sometimes I'm mighty afraid that we don't tell people just what the Lord has done for us. We talk about God as being this big, awful, terrible thing, this big person who maybe you can't reach or maybe you can't touch. But we've got to make the Lord more personable than that. We've got to make the Lord listen more our friend than that because he does such great and mighty things that he allows us listen to have victory. So what are all the things that we can get? When we come into Christ, you've got to tell others this thing. We get forgiveness. We get the pardon of our sins. Listen, we become adopted into the family of God. We have a new birth. I tell you, I talked about that before. You are resurrected with the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a new life, not only a new life, but you get eternal life. The Lord says, when I save you, I save you to the uttermost. You have peace peace with God, and you are righteous. We talked about this yesterday. You are declared righteous before the Lord Jesus Christ. And any wrath, listen, that the, the Lord may have on you because you become a part of his, God says, I will turn that wrath away from you. We are then, we are accepted by God. We are redeemed. Listen, all the things the enemy tries to do against you. The Lord says, I have redeemed you by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are redeemed redeemed from your sins. All the benefits. I'm walking. I'm, I'm running that victory lap because I have all of these benefits, Sister Rachel, that the Lord has given to me. The Holy Spirit, my God, the power, the dunamis power. The dunamis comes from the word dynamite. I have the power, listen, to overcome Satan and any of his imps. I have the power to tread on the head of the enemy. I have the power, listen, of death and life, even in my tongue as I speak those things out. What are the benefits? How am I walking? I'm walking this victory lap with my head held up high because of the spirit, the power of God that lives down inside of me. Not only that, Jesus, let me come on. He intercedes for us. Jesus, my big brother, Jesus intercedes for me and God invites us. God says, call me father. So when I call the Lord father, I understand that I have a high priest, listen, in heaven who feels for my infirmities. He knows my weaknesses. He knows knows, listen, when I'm, going, I'm falling down, he knows when I'm in despair. He knows when I'm in distress. And when he knows that my God, he equips me with every good and perfect thing that I need to get out of the quicksand. Because sometimes we're in quicksand, Sister Nadine. Sometimes we are in quicksand and it seems like we can't get out. And the more we thrash, the more we try to do it our way, it seems like the deeper we, my God, we get in. I'm talking about that victory lap. But the Lord, my God, he will throw us a lifeline, my God. And when he throws you that lifeline, you're able to hold on to it and you're able to get out of that quicksand and you're able to walk out in victory. And then you're able to walk the victory lap because the Lord has you covered. You have an internal inheritance with the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, my God, I am my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. My God, I have an inheritance in Jesus Christ. I am a citizen. Listen, I got an address. I got an address in heaven. My God. And when you, it's like when you're getting ready to move and, and you, you, and you write to the post office and you say, forward my mail to my new address. We're getting ready to walk the victory walk, the victory lap, and you can forward your mail to your new address, your new address in heaven, your heavenly home. Forward my mail. To my new address, we have, my God, what have we received in Jesus Christ? We are predestined, the Lord says, to be like him, to walk like him. And no matter what's going on in my life right now, I know, just as Romans 8 and 28 says, that all of it's going to work together for my good. 
It's going to work together for my good because we are the called according to his purpose and we love the Lord Jesus Christ. It will work together in for my good because Jesus Christ lives inside of me. He lives in me. He lives in you. And someday, listen, we will be raised immortal. Someday we will be raised immortal and we will be raised incorruptible. And someday we will reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. We will reign with him. I'm talking about taking that victory lap. It's a victory lap, people of God. It is a victory lap that we're taking right now because we are part of the body of Christ. Come on, I am his. He is mine. With Christ, all things are possible. I want you to know that today. Listen, I'm not talking negative about nothing. No more negativity because I'm taking the victory lap. We won the victory. I'm talking about what happens after the victory. We are taking the victory lap with the Lord Jesus Christ. And even as I said earlier, what does the Lord say? He said, thanks be to God who made us captives. Thanks be to God who brought us into his family. Thanks be to God who took us into a circle, into his arms. Listen, and he leads us along Christ's triumphal procession. We have the victory. And I'll close with this. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 and 50, through 58. It says, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. 57 says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then 58 says, therefore, we're taking the victory lap. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Come on, I'm telling all of you today, take the victory lap because you are victorious in Christ Jesus. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, oh God, for who you are, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. You are King of Kings. And Lord, even though, God, we may speak a thing, Lord, and maybe there are people, God, who don't believe you, don't believe in you. But Lord, I thank you that we do. I thank you, Lord God, that we hear your word and God, we will obey your word because, Lord, we are ready to take the victory lap. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've given to us, God, who you created us to be, who you've made us to be, God. And we give you glory, Lord God, for how you're going to yet work mighty miracles in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for the peace that you give us. And, Lord God, for the grace and for the mercy that follows us, oh, Lord God. I praise you, O oh God, for the favor, Lord God, that walks with us every day, even as, God, we procession in victory with you. And Lord God, I pray, God, for the people of God, for peace that surpasses all understanding and guards their heart and their minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, recognizing that you can do anything but fail. I praise you, O oh God, Lord, for the testimonies that shall come, God, from this broadcast on today, Lord God, as we are taking our stance, God, to walk the victory walk, to take the victory lap with you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us into your kingdom. Thank you, O oh God, for keeping us and holding us in your arms, O oh Lord God. Thank you for keeping us out of harm's way, Lord God, for the enemy. Because he has no power, Lord God. And we thank you that we know that and we recognize that. And because we know and recognize that, Lord God, we understand that even though he may form a weapon, there is no weapon, God, that is formed against us that shall prosper. And because of that, Lord God, we shall continue to walk in the will and the way that you have for us. Lord God, recognizing, God, that we are part of your kingdom. God, and in our inheritance, Lord God, is in you. Lord, I give you praise, God, for all the people of God who are sharing, God, this broadcast, who are listening to this broadcast. And I pray, God, your continued peace upon them, oh God. I can pray, Lord God, for health and healing, God, in the Holy Ghost. That you will continue to do, God, what you do best. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, I love you all with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. Go in peace.